Hello, my name is Jen from STI Computers in the training department, and you're listening to the STI webinar on Chartmaker mobile app. We're going to review how to sign up and set up for this mobile app and the basics of how to use it on your cell phone. Anyone can load this, doctors, technicians, front desk staff, if you have any questions while we're presenting, simply click on the chat icon and type, and I can answer those questions at the end. So step one, you'll go to our website and click the enrollments link, or you can use this link here on the screen, which will directly go to that mobile app enrollment. This allows our STI team to turn your office on for the health portal which turns on the mobile ability to your server. That may take several days, but you'll receive an email from our team once you can proceed to the next step. The page that I'm showing here was emailed to you already. Um, let me know if you don't have that, and I can resend it to you. We'll go through the next four steps on the next page with more details. So once you receive our email from the STI team that your office has been enrolled, you can now invite each staff who would like to use the mobile app. To do that, under your own practice manager, you'll go to administration, mobile administration, and open up this little area where you can click new at the bottom left. There's a green plus sign new. Select your staff member's name, add their email address to the right side, select all the practices that they have um, access to, that they need access to, and click the send at the bottom. This will have the system send an email to each of your staff, and therefore they can create their own password. So the next step would be, for each of your staff. They'll receive an email such as this that you sent them from Practice Manager. When they receive this email, they can respond on their cell email or on a PC email, doesn't matter which way. You are going to click the Register Now button in the email, which will allow you to give yourself a HIPAA secure password. Your login for the app itself will always be your email address, and then you create your own HIPAA password. Um, you do need to register on this email within 20, 48 hours, or your manager will need to resend the invitation from Practice Manager. Please keep this information safe. Always remember to follow your HIPAA regulations. Your patient data is only as secure as your staff behavior. Okay, once you do that, you'll receive one more email that welcomes you to the mobile app and lets you know what the name of the app is to look up, either on your iTunes or your Google Play Store. So on your cell phone, you'll download that app, and when you start it on your phone, you'll need that password that you created from the email before. Your login is your email address can click on this little green slider so that your app will remember your email. You don't have to keep typing that, but of course, under HIPAA, you will need to type in your password each and every time you come onto the app. The last job for the manager is in the app itself. There are a few preferences to set up. On the home page, that little caduceus at the top left, you'll select settings and go through each item. Uh, we'll look at those here. I'm going to share my actual cell phone to the right here. And we'll click on that caduceus on the top left and click settings. What you'll do as the manager, this is a one-time setup that you need to do. Just one user and your whole practice will follow this setup. This set default schedule allows you to select which provider is the main provider when you're looking at appointments. 
If you don't use appointments on Practice Manager, you can leave this area blank. If there is more than one main provider, you can simply select one or you can leave that blank. If you only have one provider, you do want to come in here, select that provider. Then we'll go back to the little caduceus at the top and choose User Preferences. This is where you're going to select which practice is your default practice. If you only have one tax ID, you'll just have one practice, select that, and go back. If you have more than one tax ID, select the one that should be the default. If they're both equally used, you can simply select one and your staff will be able to select each that they need at the time. The last item may take a little bit longer. I'm going to click back on that caduceus and choose procedure list. The purpose of this procedure list is for your providers who may be sending charges from their cell phone. So if you're not planning to send charges, this procedure list area does not need to set up, excuse me, be set up. But you can customize this screen for your office. If they do pro plan to send charges from their phone, it's basically like an external charge slip. So it will be CPT codes that you're using. To start the setup, you'll click Create List at the top with the little plus sign. You'll select which practice you're creating a list for. And then you'll name the list, such as Outpatient Hospital. Then we'll add procedure. So what you'll do is give yourself multiple lists for multiple places. For example, nursing home, outpatient hospital, inpatient hospital, ER, testing. You can customize these lists as you need to. Clicking Add Procedure, you can search for the CPT codes either by description, so I could put in the word hospital and hit search, and this will allow me to search the CPT codes that have the word hospital in it. Or I can click on the little red lines to change it to CPT code. And in that case, I could then search 992 and hit my glasses. That will show me all the codes that start with 992 something. And then I can select those. So I'll click one at a time. If I select one, when I hit App Procedure again, it keeps me in the same search, so nice and easy. If you are searching for CPT codes that are all in a row, it will be nice and easy to select all those. To go back to that main page of Procedure List, use the little left arrow at the top. That takes me back to all of my Procedure Lists. Again, this is one-time setup. One staff needs to set this up, and every user from any cell phone will see the same procedure list. To see an example of a set up office, I will open this up, and it would allow me to see all the lists that have been created. So ER visits, here are all my ER visits. So it will allow your staff the ability to select procedure lists, just like a charge slip for billing outside of the office. Going back to that little caduceus, the other items we have in this area, the help and about, will give you um, the FAQs we have and the privacy policy, terms of service, if, you're in, if you needed to read those items. And also we have a send feedback option. This allows you to send a quick note about a suggestion, um, or something, a new feature request that you may have, or simply a comment on something that you're using on the cell phone. We do have a team who reviews all the items that you're sending here, and um, they have been responding uh, fairly quickly with um, when multiple providers were asking for things, they've already changed some programming based on feedback that was sent from this little page here directly in your cell phone. So now let's cover how your provider or staff will use their phone. So I'm going to go back to the home screen and we'll switch our back screen here with some little key 
description. So home screen is this. You have patient, schedule, charge, capture, and rounds. You can get to your patients from any of those options. We're going to start with patient options. You may be searching here when it's a weekend, a patient is calling in about a medication reaction. Before you return your call, their call, you can look at their name up and see what you have in their chart. So I'm going to start by searching his name, that is the default, and hitting my glasses here. Instead of name, if you're not finding the patient you're looking for, maybe the last name isn't spelled exactly as um, you're trying, you can hit the little red line icon on the left here, and that will give you options. I can search by account number or date of birth or phone number. So those, these are the four ways that you can search your patients. Once your patient comes up, then I can select it. It does give me the birth date and the account number in case I do have patients with the same name. I want to make sure I'm going into the right patient chart. Okay. So this allows me to get the demographics of the patient. If you notice at the bottom, there are three main icons. The little memo pad is your demographics. The heartbeat will give us some chart EMR information, diagnoses and such, and the dollar sign would let me charge out the patient. So we'll look first at this memo pad, which is the default. It gives me contact information. All of these, you can click the little arrow there to get more details. So I can get phone number, home address, and email address. The phone number is blue, if you notice. That's a link to literally call the patient. So I can click on that, and my cell phone would then call that phone number. I can see insurance from here if I needed to. If they have multiple cases, I can get information on that workers' comp insurance. I have pharmacies. If you do use our EMR, then your pharmacy information from Chartmaker Clinical will show here on the memo pad, and I can call the pharmacy directly from this page. So if I open up this one pharmacy, I have the phone number, and that's blue, which means I can click on it, and it will link me to physically calling this pharmacy. I can open appointments and see last appointment, next scheduled appointment, and also healthcare proxies. If I do have healthcare proxies written in Practice Manager or Chartmaker Clinical, it will show for me here, and then I would know whether I could speak to this person when I'm out of the office. I would know that they are authorized as a healthcare proxy. The second little icon I can go to is the heartbeat. So here shows me my EMR face sheet. So if you don't use our Chartmaker Clinical, this area will not provide information for you. But if you do and you've filled out advanced directives, for example, that will show you what you've answered in the advanced directions button. Allergies will show you what you have detailed. Medications will give you what's on the face sheet of your clinical chart. You can get details under each medication. And then diagnoses as well. That will show you the last used diagnoses, inactive and pre-existing diagnoses. And the third icon at the bottom is the little dollar sign, which shows me the area where I can send a new charge or see history. Now this area here is a brand new feature for us only about two weeks ago, and it came from doctors requesting the ability to see the history of charges sent. So that is showing you anything sent from the mobile app, it shows you here. It also allows me, if I'm doing the same exact item, I can use the copy charge feature. So we'll show that when we go into charges directly. But that feature was only created because providers sent in feedback and requested the ability to do that, and enough providers um, would be helped by that feature, so we were able to spend the programming time to do that for you. I'm going to go back up to that little caduceus and click Home. So 
schedule would be the next area I'd like to show you. When I click schedule, this shows me my appointment module in Practice Manager. So I can change provider. This is using the default provider I've put in. But if I click the little drop down, I can change provider and see a different provider. So your staff will be able to select the provider and change that here. You also can select the day. It assumes today, but I can hit the arrow and change it to a different day. At the top right, it's giving me the tally of how many patients do I have today total. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I can hit that little red line icon if I needed to filter either by practice and only wanted to see one of those two practices I have, or by schedule type. So there are um, multiple locations you maybe see patients in. If you have multiple schedules such as that, you may want to be look, focusing on just one of those schedules. Excuse me. If I needed to see more information about this appointment, I can click on the appointment itself, and it takes me to the patient details of this appointment. And so if there was a message, I can see that here. If someone in Practice Manager side wrote a message for me on the appointments, I would see those details. And if you notice, her name is blue. If I click on her name, it takes me directly to the patient's chart. So this would be the same as if I had searched her from the patient icon at the beginning. So this gives me her insurance. She has no EMR chart, so the pharmacies is grayed out, as you can see. And the healthcare proxies is also grayed out. She has never filled that out um, for us in the computer, so it is not available on the cell phone. The appointments will always show you first, um, last appointment, and then upcoming appointment. And then I can go back to that appointment details, or one more time back would take me to the schedule. So I can manipulate my way through the schedule by doctor, by location, um, and even look up certain patient information. Okay, I'm going to go back to the little caduceus and hit home. And now we'll look at the charge capture area. So when I click charge capture, this allows me to search a patient at the top if I'm going directly in this way, and I'm going to hit my search magnifying glass, and it will take me to my patient. <clears throat> so once I open my patient chart, I have several options here, whether I can add a brand new charge from scratch, or I can copy a charge that has already been um, completed in the past of this patient. Okay, so let's look at a new charge. Although as I'm clicking new charge, I can see the charges that I have sent from my mobile app in the past. So I'm going to click new charge and we'll start as if from scratch. So it does remind me who is my patient at the top. It's bringing my provider, although if this is not me, I can change that. The facility is filling in based on the last charge on the mobile. So this makes sense when your patient is in the same location for extended period of time. If they have moved facilities, you would then change the facility. Enter procedure would be next. So I'll click that blue enter procedure. This takes me to three different ways to find CPT codes. The first page is my heart. Um, this is my personal favorite. And if you notice on the left now, um, it does describe the heart and the star, which are those two options at the bottom. The heart are my favorite codes, which when you first start using the app, there will be no favorite codes here because you haven't personally set anything up. But the star is where all the procedure lists who your manager may have set up like little charge slips for you. This shows me all those procedure charge slips. Every user of the app will see the same thing under the star. Under the heart are your own personal things based on your email address login. If I'm looking for something under the star, 
then I would be able to um, open up by hitting that drop down for the category and I could then click on the procedure code that I want to bill. So I changed facilities, now it's her first time in, or his first time in this facility, I'm going to bill that new code. We'll go back into that procedure searching in a bit. The enter diagnosis, I'll click on that. This gives me several different things as well. I'm gonna change that background screen for those details. So I have three different ways to search diagnosis. The little clock shows me the last used codes. So that will give me anything that I've used for this particular patient in the last um, couple of charges. The little stethoscope gives me from the EMR chart. So if your office does not use our chart maker EMR, you won't need to use the stethoscope. The stethoscope will take you to the EMR face sheet and allow me to select something that I have in the face sheet. To select, I simply click anywhere on the line of the word or the code, and it gives me the check mark. So that's a toggle click on and off. So if I click it again, it takes it off. If I click it, it's going to put it back on. So I'm going to go back to that first little screen. This is the default screen when you open, and it's giving me the last used codes. So I would be possibly selecting any of these codes. If you notice at the bottom, it's giving me a tally of three because that is how many total I have now selected based on what is here. I also can search from scratch. So that third icon is the search, your magnifying glass. This takes you to the full ICG-10 book. I could search by description or I could search by code. So first I'll put in just something like headache and I don't need the whole word. I need enough of the word that I don't have a huge number of responses. But I would start typing that word and hit the magnifying glass. This will take me to the chapters in the ICD-10 book that have the word headache in it. And then I would simply select which chapter I know that what I'm looking for is in. And I just keep clicking until it gets me to a billable code and then I can select that. The other way I can search is I can change to search by code instead. So oftentimes you'll know what you're looking for, you know the beginning of the code, and then I simply want to see everything under R10 because then I'm looking for these areas. So I can select something. If you notice, there's some blue, some gray. The blue, are billable codes. The gray have a blue arrow to get down to the billable code because I need one or two more digits. And then I can select what I need. To finish out, I would hit the arrow next to this little tally of five which I have. So I'll click the arrow and it gives me my total of what I am billing. And then I would simply take off anything that doesn't make sense today or that maybe I found a better code, but I didn't take it off. I can do that here and then click OK. So now I have this charge ready to go. There are additional things I may need. So I can open up that bottom additional charge item. This allows me to change the date if I'm not billing for today. Maybe I'm popping in something from yesterday. I can add a modifier. So if I know I also did a test or something else that I'm going to bill for this patient, I will need to add a modifier. I'll click on this, enter the modifier, and it shows me all the modifiers that you have in your own practice manager. And then I can select that. I can add more. I simply come to, so sometimes you do have other modifiers to use. You can do multiple at a time and I'll close that little modifier area. You could change the billable units if you needed to type in a two or a three. The practice is going to assume the practice the patient is included in, but if the patient is attached to more than one practice, you can switch that here if it's needed. Same as case, it's going to um, 
default to normal, but if your patient does have a worker's comp or no fault or a different type of case, which is using different insurance, then you can select that here. You also have a comment area. So this allows you to free text anything that you may need to provide to your biller. So um, maybe just a mention that I can't remember what modifier to use here, or I was looking for a headache with XYZ and I'm not finding that diagnosis. It allows you um, area to ask a question or give a statement of extra information for your biller. Your biller will see this note on the charge when they are proofreading the charges that you've sent over. It does not go to an insurance company and it would not print on a patient bill unless the biller would select it later to print for a patient. So they can print for a patient if you need them to. But in general, these comments will be directed to your own staff and not needing to bill or print. If I'm finished, I would hit send charge and that would allow the charge to be sent out. The system leaves me in another charge for the patient if I needed to bill something else. But maybe in this case, I'd like to bill something I've already billed before. So I'll show you how quick that is. I'm going to use the arrow to go backwards just to this patient's history of charges. So if I was billing this test again, I can quickly rebill the same test and it will put in today's date. So I'm going to do that by hitting the little charge copy. So what this does is put everything in that was billed out before, the diagnoses are already pre-filled, if there was a modifier in the past, then that would be here. And um, it has that same CPT code. I still can edit anything. So for example, I had moved facilities, so I would need to change this facility. And then my CPT code is fine. Let's say my diagnoses are fine. I may want to remove these modifiers. So then I can take them off if they're not necessary on this second CPT code. And if I'm finished, oh, and actually we'll make this the same key. If I'm finished, I simply hit send charge. So the copy a last charge is so nice and easy. I always can get there by just going back one screen and it takes me to show me everything that I build today. It's showing me the history of today plus things in the past that I have built, and I can go back um, quite a bit here. If I was looking at something a month ago, I can find things that I have built in the past, and I can copy them right from here. Okay, so let's go back to our main screen again, the home screen, and we'll look at the rounds option. So this is also the rounds feature, is a brand new feature based on requests from offices. So I'm going to click the rounds option and it will show me a census of who is in the hospital or nursing homes or whatever outside facility in the case where you wouldn't be putting these patients in your appointments in Practice Manager, but you do like to have a list of all these patients that you're seeing. So if I come to this Albany Medical Center, for example, I would click on that link and that shows me my patients. Now the first screen told me I had three patients in this, practice, in this medical center and I'm only seeing one. And that is because of the from date. It's literally showing me only the people who were admitted in the last 30 days. Now if you see short term hospital patients, that would be fine. But for me, I have some long term patients in this medical center. So I would need to change that from date and because it's a test database, I'm going to go back a whole year. And now I can see all three patients that are in. From that front screen though, I knew there were three patients. So when I came here and we only saw one, then I would um, know that I need to change that date. This can sort my patient names. I only have three, but if you have more than what you can see on the screen, five or 10 or 15 patients, you may want to sort them in a different way. So the little red 
line icon allows you to sort by the default is admitted date, but you may sort them by name or even room number if your staff enters the room number. The other things you can sort by are practices if you need to, or provider. So in general, you usually need to see all providers because you're probably each seeing the same patient, multiple providers. So, but if you do keep your own patients, then you can sort by just yourself. So I'm going to hit apply, and that would have changed the sort if I changed which one to sort by. You have two pages here on the rounding list. The first, the default, are who are in the beds at the center, and that is the little bed icon. But the other page that you have are, here are my, my discharge patients. So it shows me from the last month, who did I discharge um, in the last month? And so it would give me a tally of that. Sometimes you need access to that information. If I go back to who's in the bed now, my choices of what to do with this patient, I can click on the patient's name, takes me to their chart, just like if I had searched the patient. So it's nice and quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click on that patient. It gives me right to her chart, just like we had before. So you are on the memo icon, which is giving you demographics, pharmacies, healthcare. I can go to her EMR chart, and I could charge her out. So I have options just from going into her name. I'm going to go backwards one page, so we'll look at that list again of all the patients. The other blue links I have available for each patient, I can copy a charge that I've done in the past, or I can start a brand new charge. So that's what these two icons are for. You're copying or you're adding a brand new charge. I also can skip the patient. So under the little ellipse allows me the option to either skip her, so maybe today she is not in her room what in the hour that I'm at that center, so I'm going to skip her so that I know I did go to her room, but she just wasn't available. And that would show her as skipped. If I go back one, you'll see that it shows her as a skipped. But my other option in there, if you notice, was also a discharge. So this is a brand new feature because um, doctors wrote in and said, well, sometimes I'm seeing them and I know I'm discharging them right now. I don't want my staff to have to put the date in. Can I put the date in? So this now allows you, it's a new feature that will fill out your practice manager hospital button with that date. And either I can change it to um, yesterday or some other day if I hadn't done that in the past. That allows me to do that. So these patients, where are they coming from? That The screen behind, we'll talk about this. The patients on your rounds, uh, rounding list on the cell phone are coming from practice manager hospitalization button. So this is used on the patient demographic screen. Your staff may not have ever used that hospital button before, so this may be a workflow change, but it would be helpful to you on your cell if you do see patients outside of the office and you'd like to have them show on your rounding list. What your staff will do is in the patient tab, in Practice Manager, they can click on that hospitalization button and fill out the admit date and the facility the patient is in are the two required fields. They also can fill out room number and provider if need be. What happens is this is actually helpful for billing as well because if you're seeing a patient in a hospital or nursing home, you need that admit date in your billing claim. So if you have it sitting here in the hospitalization button, the chart screen will fill in that date for your staff, and you'll also be able to see the patient on that rounding list for yourself. So that is helpful in two areas. Whether or not you're using it on the mobile, it will help your staff on that rounding list. If they have never used this or you're seeing old patients under your rounding list, you can grab in Practice Manager under the Reports tab, there's a List sub-tab and Patient Hospitalization. That allows you to see who's in there and maybe you need uh, your staff to clean up and put in some discharge dates. Many times um, patients or staff who use the hospitalization button 
they had no need to go back and hit a discharge date in there unless the hot patient went in the hospital again. But if you're planning to use your cell phone to see these patients on the rounding list, you do want them, your staff, to be putting in that discharge date, or you can enter that from your cell now as well. So I'm going to go back to this area. The um, icons that you have available, your ellipse allows you to either skip the patient or discharge the patient, and that um, allows you to see your, if you see on this screenshot, I saw this first patient and I skipped the other, the next patient, and I have not yet seen that third patient on my list. So that's where that's coming from. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So for everyone on the billing side, if your biller has never sent charges from the EMR side, then this will be a new workflow for them as well. When you send charges from the mobile cell app, you will be sending them to this tab. It's in Practice Manager on the Charge tab, the Pending Charges sub-tab. Now, if your staff has never used this tab before, we have two little videos on YouTube that they can review how to use these tabs. Um, nothing that the provider sends from their cell goes directly to insurances. It comes here as a pending charge because a biller still needs to look at the claim and maybe add things that were not added to the cell phone. For example, referring physician is not coming from the mobile cell. If you need pre-certs or authorizations, those are coming from practice manager side, not from the cell phone. And if a modifier needs to be added or removed or diagnosis order needs to be tweaked, that's something that a biller will be able to handle on the practice manager side before it goes out in the um, to insurance billing. So it's not coming directly from the app. Somebody does need to look at that from this side. Okay, so to wrap up, we have your main screen access. You can look at your schedules if you use those in Practice Manager. You can go directly to a patient, directly to charge capture, or even look at a rounds area so that you have quick list of all the patients outside the, uh, your office. So you can picture sitting with a patient, clicking on their 9 a.m. appointment and getting right to their meds, last diagnoses, and then after you examine them, you can click that dollar sign to enter a charge, kind of come full circle without even needing a laptop in front of you. So some of the features that we're looking at adding, this first one, ability to discharge from cell, they've already just added. So I didn't even have a chance to take it off my um, training here. So that's something based on requests from providers who sent that on their uh, suggestion box. So next upcoming is a report of charges sent. So currently you can be in a patient and see the charges you sent for that patient. But what we'd also like to have is one little list of if I saw 13 patients, I want to see all 13 patients' names together so I can review quickly that I didn't miss someone. And then a bigger project we're doing are, is to be able to see chart notes from your cell phone. So chart notes meaning anything from a template, your progress note, a phone call, anything that is actually a template in the clinical EMR, you'll be able to view it on your cell phone. And then additionally, we hope to be able to create a way to view scans that you have in your chart. So whether that's an attachment, a PDF, um, a lab result, anything that you scanned from hospitals into the EMR, any scans will also be able to be seen on your cell phone. So those are two big projects that we're working on right now. And I thank you all for your time. Please don't hesitate to call in to support if you have questions or you need help in the process of setting up your um, app or if there's something that you don't understand. We also have a huge manual 
um, about 45 pages with lots of good screenshots that can review that app. And we have a short two-page quick, quick reference card. So you have um, the ability to get that information and get your office up and running on this cell phone app. And thank you again for your time. Have a great day.